this is a powerful prayer for Billy Graham that Lauren sent. So uh, okay. let's open up with this. Okay. He wrote this. He was 95. Heavenly Father, we can all pray this together in our hearts. I'm before you today to ask you forgiveness and seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, woe to those who call evil good. But that is exactly what we've done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and reversed our value. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed our unborn and called it choice. We have shot abortionists and called it just fire. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it image. We have polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it evil. Search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Cleanse us from sin. Amen. All right, John, that came, All right. Some some of that came in and out. There was um some disruption, just saying yeah. auditorially. Yeah. Take care, Terrence. But, yeah, Terrence, there was noise in the background. He's got people there and it just doesn't work. Okay, no problem. When somebody else speaks, it obviously pulls from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it was just, you know, we had to Probably Selma didn't get on. I don't know if she's having problems or not. I think she sent me a crazy... Oh, she sent me the wrong number. And I texted her back. <laughs> she sent me a wrong number. Like, what... And she's, you know, she's so funny. I don't know if I should... Uh, uh, hey, how's everybody? Any uh, thing to share? Uh, Questions, considerations. It's a private small group. It's Trish and Lauren. Well, yeah, it's a threesome. There you go, John. I sent it out. Um, to, I sent it out really late. I, was, I sent it out like it was super. Late, I didn't know if you were doing it, and I thought that because we spoke you yesterday. You know what? About... early in the day. I got into recording. I was. Yeah. And to you know, I was trying. What I'm trying to do is, uh, what I, I accomplished it. I took one of my recordings. Um, I'm learning to get better at the program, and what I did is I blanked out uh, the lead vocal, and uh -huh. I blanked out the lead guitar. And so what I'm going to do, probably finish it tomorrow, is I found a way to play that in the video this format like video format yeah cool and so i can i can sing and play the guitar with my background and i could also i can nice so you can it's like a live performance and you got your band yeah. behind you <laughs> i'm close i'm close yeah a little tricky, nice but, oh yeah. hey i wanted to say i'm looking at like your screen and you did put up you put up billy grant the the printed version so even though we couldn't hear you you yeah. were going in and out we could read it i'm sorry like i just want everybody to be able to hear and see that i found it to be very powerful so thank you that's all now, you, are you, so you're the one who sent that other poetry to tina with the guy that looks like jude law yeah no i sent that this morning I received it in the morning and I shot it out to you and Tina immediately. Where'd you and get it's it? funny. Uh, uh, just a woman that I used to volunteer in an old folks home in here in Allendale. I worked with her and we, we've stayed in touch. I mean, we don't pick up the phone. We don't talk, but we trade email. She sent me that. Yeah. Um, she, she sends me all kinds of political crap too. Um, so we, but 
Like every now and then that she was, sends me was, a gem was, and it made me cry. Was, it was like, oh my that God, was so well, that well, was so amazing. Well, well. It was yeah. so perfect because it was not overly produced. It was just real and beautiful. And, oh my God, that's why I couldn't wait. He's a poet. You, did you see that yeah. he, does, he does a few other things? You checked it out? No, I did not. And I love at the very end that he lets his little kids kind of like ad lib. Did you let it play all the way out? Yes, I did. Oh, I mean, it's it just, it makes your heart sing that, you know what? People are starting to get it. I hope people are starting to wake up. I guess we'll have to wait and see. At once, as, as in every situation, some will and some won't. We can't. Well, Correct. Can, That's you're right. We can be here. Uh, we have to be here as prophets and avatars. Yeah. That's been the word today. Uh, you know, uh, avatar. To, what's an avatar, John? I don't. What's an? I mean, I That's saw the movie, movie and I love. It. Yeah. Thank you, movie. Trish. I did. <laughs> well, it's such thank a romantic, you know. well done movie. I love the movie. I fell in love with the movie. I remember. I took oh my God! It was beautifully done. <laughs> Oh, but what does the word avatar mean? What what what's avatar? You know, an avatar. When you play video games, I don't know right. if you've ever done it, but the kids, you choose a figure that you're. Oh. I get, okay. So you choose something to live vicariously through while you're playing the game. Right. 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 So I wow okay two website names today avatars for Christ with a number four and avatars for Christ with an F O R because that's a whole book and a whole teaching we are avatars for Christ because we were having this discussion I was sharing with Terrence I'll share it with you guys okay uh, we have somebody else on now oh, no no he left he must be, he must I'd be like there. to know am I a I remember when I was TV. Um, I think you were CEO. I think you are. You're CEO. I don't know. CEO? Okay. I was trying to figure, why am I CEO? I think it becomes, for some reason, call is zero. I think that means. I don't know. Can you see my picture? I can't, no. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to be seen right now. <laughs> I don't. Had a really Trish, no, but people. none of us do. I mean, I look like a skunk with the white stripe right down my head. Nah, that's not a good look. No, I, well, I could see Terrence and I could see John, and I'm thinking, why can't I see you? Why can't I see Lauren? And am I being seen? I don't know, you know, so I was trying to figure that out. Um, okay, that, that's all I wanted to know. Go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah, no, I... Uh... No, well, we, Trish, you and I have to allow our cameras and um, in, you know, just deference to you guys, like, to spare you, I am not allowing my camera. I can't even get my camera because it's grayed out, you know, and I can't do the mic anymore. So I'm on the phone right now and watching the computer. And what John has up there, but I have to have both going because I can't, I can't do it otherwise. But that's um, it's huh. working now. Yeah, I so. hear you perfectly. Your voice sounds perfect, so I just can't. See yeah, you. yours does. So I'm hearing everybody as well. Yeah, I'm trying to find the. Okay. Well, what happened is I'm trying to find the thread. You go nuts with these phones and these threads and everything. It's, I know. Oh, oh here it is, here, Danny Burke. Uh, yeah, because Steve had opened up a thread this morning, and basically he sent out a picture of a sunset on a beach, and had the proverb sixteen three on it, which said, "Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established." So Tina huh. said, "Amen," and Steve said, "I need a purpose." And I said, you know, he hit my favorite word, purpose of it. I said, hello. I said, wisdom is knowledge with a purpose. And his wisdom, who is Jesus, 
brings the father's desires. So his desires become our purpose. Right. When I said that, it really clicked with me. And I said it to one of the prisoners today, and he loved that. So that's why say, that, say that again. Say it again. The new catchphrase is his capital H I S, his his desires become right. our purpose. Hmm, interesting. Our see, you're cut. You're cutting out. But if you, I want, I want to see that printed out. That because I'm retarded and I can't remember things, I want to bring them up in my brain. And yeah, I want to yeah. see that. That's 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 a gem, it's a diamond, John. Hmm. Avatars for Christ. Yeah, yeah no, actually, yeah, I, I did this wrong. It's not his delight, but it's another thing. His desire. Let me put it. Uh, yeah. yeah just, Trish, mute your mic until you want to talk. Okay. Yeah, just keep it muted. Then when you have a comment, unmute it, mute it back. We're going to have to do that because what happens is if you even just breathe or a noise comes from you, it cuts my volume down. They should be able to overcome that, but they don't. But yeah, that's what happened to Lauren if she didn't hear me because whatever. This is it right here. His desires become editing right on here. His desires become our purpose. Zelma. Zelma keeps I have to call her. You guys don't know. Poor Zelma. <laughs> She's so confused. We call her. She's not on our group tonight. She only I don't see her. touched the message. I don't think she understands that. So. All right. Hello. Selma, where are you? What's going on? I was looking for a connection. All this techie. Listen, listen, listen. When you, look, you open up my text to you, yeah. I just sent it to you. There will be some yellow letters with underlining all you have to do is touch you with your finger it'll bring you right to the meeting okay yellow letters with underlining. okay let me take a look yeah i just sent it to you individually i sent it to you she's a sweetheart so uh she's really cute <laughs> she's a cat character um i can't wait to meet her He's the best. Um, so anyway, we had this wonderful conversation and then it came to me, you know, as we were talking because um, because then Steve said and I, then I said, then I reminded everybody about purpose, you know, his desire to become our purpose and then Romans 8.28 says all things work together who love God called to his purpose. Amen. Because, you know, I said, you know, Jesus loves everybody, but he didn't hang out with everybody. He hung out with those who were called to his father's purpose. He loved everybody. But he stayed with and educated and fellowship with people who were called to his father's purpose. So, so Steve had said, you know, just going to work and coming home is so dull sometimes. I feel like a robot. So Tina said, well, why don't you play your music at the Ocean Grove Pavilion? Inspire people. Is that allowed? He said, yeah, they didn't shut down uh, OG down, whatever that is. Oh, Ocean Grove down. Then I said, then it came to me. I said, what if your body is the Lord's avatar body? So he oh. So you see, it's not you going to work, Steve. It's him going to work in your body. You would have a different day for sure, wouldn't you? And then Anna wrote, love that. And then I said, uh, then he said, I'm being led to let him use me for his kingdom. There's a song by Casting Crown with these words that are always on my heart. Who am I that the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again? And uh, wow. that the voice that calmed the sea would call out through the rain. You know the song, right? 
You know who am I, right? You know that, Lauren? Who am I? I, uh, I, I no, I, well, look on if me. you sing it, up. Uh -huh. watch me rise again. I don't get that, but who am I? That the voice that come to see cold out through the rain on the stormy me. Who am I? That you know, that's the way it goes. But um anyway, mm -hmm. so I said if 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 we only have a fate um, let me see. Oh I wrote if you have to fake surrendering to his purpose. Oh I said he said, well, something about uh, Oh, practice being in the world is challenging some days, somebody. Well, I said, yes, but only if you have to fake it, not surrender to his purpose to continue his ministry. Jesus said, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And then Steve heard from Haggai. And, you know, we just had this really good flow. Back and back and forth. Yeah. And... And we said, uh, you know, I just got to do it. I said, you know, I wrote, Jesus replied, my mother and my brothers are all those who hear God's word and obey it. Remember, it's your will and his power, not your willpower. And that's the whole AA. And Steve and I later had a real long discussion on the phone about it's the same thing in AA, the same thing in Christianity. There's only one step. And then there's 11 ways of working it out. But you have to know that oh, you, hey, are you have to know. You have to know you, you can't be a Christian. There's no power to do it. That your body is set for sin. It's always going to be set for sin to the day you die. And you have to just accept that. And, and once you accept that, that's the place that Paul came to in Romans 7, moving into Romans 8. He went, winds wow. up at the end. Romans 7, who shall deliver me? Yeah. And then he says, well, thanks be to God, it was already done. And all I have to do is walk in the spirit. And that's the avatar. You okay? When the guy went into that, yeah. what did he have to do? He had to go to sleep. He had to die to his crippled body so that he could walk in the body of the avatar. Wow, that's a great analogy, John. That's really Isn't that awesome. awesome. That today. That, that'll preach, right? That'll teach on YouTube. I will tell you what, that'll that'll reach the, the youngins out there that are just resistant. I mean, that's a great yeah. that's a great teaching, my friend. It's it's I'm gonna put that together into one teaching with the Whoopi Goldberg teaching. You know, my Whoopi Goldberg. It's the same. Con that's the same concept. You know, same letting thing. Jesus go, go yeah. ahead, use me. Yeah, go use ahead, use me. Use me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just pray God, you know, and against the enemy that I can just get some energy and get some clarity tomorrow. We got Donnie's birthday, so I'll probably go over in the backyard, get some sunshine, do my social distancing with my mask. <laughs> did you not go out there today? I, I did not. Johnny invited me, but I had a crazy day. I was doing a lot of recording. Then I went to Acme, and I, I bought a lot of food, spent a lot of time. I was a little weary, weary today, and you know, and I, I just didn't have the own. I said, since I'm going there tomorrow, I'm going to see all the kids tomorrow. So I just didn't have okay. it. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, because I don't really buy the kids. I don't go crazy with birthday gifts. They got so much stuff and everything. You always said that, yep. So what I'm thinking about, I started a little bit. I'm thinking maybe, I want to see if I can write a little song for Dom, give her that as a gift. Well, you did do the Dommy. Why don't you expand on that? <laughs> Well, I have to do it in a different direction, but yeah, I'm going to see if I get an inspiration by the Lord. I can write, you know, if I get an inspiration from the Lord, I can write the song in 10 minutes because it just, that's the way it comes. Yeah. But, you know, I kind of feel like that would be cool. I can get bring my guitar and just for our birthday. 
Have some but, fun. Let it rip. Let it rip. Rip it. So anyway, if you guys want to, uh, let's let's look at Daniel. I think there's some really cool stuff. And Trisha's okay. son's name is Daniel, so she'll like that. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel. His name means God is my judge. Ooh. L is God. Donnie, Don, the, the tribe of Dan is considered judges. You know, it, it, the word means judgment. God brings okay. judgment. God is my judge. Uh, so here we look, and this is what I'm trying to get Lauren introduced, and maybe you, Trish, too, is to understand that the Babylonian, uh, you know, the, the, the situation with Babylon is so important to God. Uh, that I Thank you, John, because I, I don't know the Old Testament. I don't know any of this. I, I don't have it, so thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to just one more time. I really feel bad about Selma. She, I don't know why she can't touch the thing on the screen and get in. That's all you do, right? She's al she's always here. Selma. Not, yeah, go ahead. Are you on? No. Yeah. Uh, John, when you, when John I, can't, I can't get on either. I mean, I'm on the phone because I can't push any buttons on the computer. I'm here. I'm seeing you and what you've got um, on there, but I can't manipulate any buttons so i'm having to use the phone no, but i'll, phone. I'll, I'll you use got my text you got my text Zelma. it wasn't yellow you should be able to touch an underlined yellow word and that should bring you your phone right to the, our meeting it, isn't that how you did on last time you've been on a few times that's just total directions when they come in i'm not i'm not a techie you know no it's not techie it's it, it's easier than techie you touch it so you don't have to be a techie. If you touch that, it's a link. It's called a link. Yeah. You touch it. You she should it. have. She You're she off. should have the app. Does she have the app? No, no. That's because I called you and you just answered the call. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to give you credit for that. You know, but uh, listen, <laughs> listen. You should be able to right now go to your home screen because you can talk and do things at the same time on the phone. It's, it's multitasking. And yeah, go down to the bottom. Do you have a, a Android or an iPhone? Yeah. But if you can, you go no no. Can you go to your texts right now while you're talking to me? It should let you go to the text message I sent you. It came in only a couple of minutes ago, five minutes ago. Okay. I can hear you. All right, then you have the text? No, I haven't got the text yet. Okay. I have an old phone. That's all right. It still should do that. If you go to the main screen with your finger down at the bottom, if you hit that circle, it brings you to your, your desktop. And then you look for your messages. You should be able to pull up my message. Then I might be able to help you. I think she hung up. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's the same. Well, uh, it, it, I'll just keep her on the phone then. You know, I'll just keep That's her good enough. That's good enough. Yeah, it's okay. She doesn't have to see it. But, you know, it, it's so frustrating not to be able to help her, not be there. I know. We'll give her a couple of minutes. But anyway, to get back to that, it's very important because when God gives that much real estate, like Ed Miller likes to say, uh, you know, in the uh, Torah, the first time, uh, the set one. You can hear that. She's like, I'm oh, yeah. in my closet, and she's all the way down. I'm sorry. I'll mute. Sounds like yeah, she's I, in the I'm... room with you. Really? You got some no microphone. Reason, these, no, these these phones they pick up background noise. Probably they do that to spy on us, but picks up background noise. Maybe. Noise. I'm, well, trying the, I'm trying yeah, to get to the. I'm trying to get to the place well, to move. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. But um. 
God gives that much real estate, that much pages, that much space in his scripture. Like, he gives a lot of space to Paul's conversion. It's probably, other than Christ's crucifixion, the Passion Week of, of Jesus in the New Testament, the second most real estate words, number of words and space goes to Paul's conversion. Well, these things are very important to God. It, in the Old Testament, God gives a lot of space in the first five books, which we call the Torah, the book. The, the first five books of the Old Testament, God gives a lot of space to the tabernacle. And we know that, that how important the tabernacle is to God because as the rabbis agree with us, God's greatest desire is to live down here in us, not only with us, but in us, with us, then in us. And that's exactly what Jesus indicated to his disciples. When they said, why are you going away? What are you doing? No, he says it's better, he says in John 14, 15, 16. He said, trust me, I, this is better because now I'm with you. When I go to my father, we'll send another, we'll be in you. And that's the fulfillment of the entire Bible. Okay, so that, that's a big, big subject. That God wants to dwell, as Ed Miller says, says it best. God has always desired to live in a tent covered with skin. That's what the tabernacle was. They used after, actually dolphin skin. Black. Uh, he wanted to live in a tent covered with skin and fill it with his glory. You know, and that ultimately becomes the body of Christ, the Mishkan, the individual tents, the individual tabernacles. So that's the reason for all this spiritual self-esteem, however you want to put it, the honoring of the body sitting in a circle is the physical honoring of the value of people. That's what the you know, big guys don't like that. You know, they just want to be on the stage. They want to be with the mic and the spotlight. Uh, if you sit in a circle, it brings everybody down to the same level, which is exactly what God said to John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord, prophesied from Isaiah 40. And you two guys know that, Lauren and Trish? That yep, yep. You know that. That, that in Isaiah chapter 40, that was the prophetic mention that there was going to be a forerunner, somebody who prepares the way for the Christ. Thelma's calling that. Yep. Yep. Hey, Thelma. Well, I guess we'll just stay on the phone with you then. It doesn't pay to try it the other way. For some reason, someone has to help you with that. We'll have to send somebody over in IT. But intervention eric's gonna have to come over and just show you what button to push unless you do it on your computer but uh, don't worry it doesn't matter i'm we're just talking now i was talking about babylon i was talking about the old testament trying to explain right now we're talking about how uh, you know god's desire for all eternity the whole book is about him coming to live inside of us that's that's the thing christ in you the hope of glory we just mentioned that in the book of John, his disciples were all upset well, that he's leaving, but he said, no, no, it's better if I go. Yeah. You know, and you know the thing, because you got around. And, 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 and he wants to live in us. So this is what we're talking about. Now in Babylon, Babylon is, can actually, I was telling him about how much word space, when God gives a lot of word space, Bible real estate, we call it, to a particular right. topic, you got to pay attention to that because because right. his whole book is completely organized. It's him, and I didn't know this until I became an older Christian. Actually, after two thousand eight, when I began to dawn on me that if you look at the Old Testament, you will kind of notice that about three quarters of the Old Testament is something to do with the Babylonian captivity. Okay, we call it pre-exilic, post-exilic. The exile is so important. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Pre-exilic, before they were exiled, you have prophets during the exile and post-exilic. That takes up Daniel, Ezekiel, Nehemiah, Ezra. It's wow. all there. And even yeah. the book of Esther has to do with after the exile. These people are living in what we call today Iraq. And they're under the rule. The Jews are under the rule of these uh, Assyrian. The way to remember it is this. The Jews were attacked and controlled by three major kingdoms. Right. A, it's easy. It's as easy as A, B, C. ABC, Assyria, Babylon, and the Chaldees. The Chaldees. What's the Chaldees? The Chaldeans were another kingdom of people. But what happened is, you know, first the Assyrians rose up, and they, you know, they were enemies to Israel and did some conquering, and then that went away. The Babylonians came. The Babylonians took them. God allowed the Babylonians to destroy Jews. They, they, um. they actually destroyed the temple, which was a beautiful temple, which they pined about forever. Uh, most magnificent and not only did they destroy the temple they robbed all the gold all the furnishings but they plowed the remains of the temple so far underground that there was not a trace of it wow yeah people don't know that but that's mm. what they i didn't i yeah. I don't, By watching, yeah. watching videos on Ron Wyatt, Y-W-A-T-T, -T, he passed now, but he was the original, you know, Indiana Jones. Ron He's Wyatt the discoverer was. of that stuff. So he, by reading the scriptures, and he, he spent his life seeking these things out, and supposedly, and I believe it, he found the Ark of the Covenant under the mount, the mount where Jesus was crucified. So the blood of Jesus yeah. actually... Went through he had it tested, right, John? He had it right, tested. Right, he had it tested. The DNA things went on, everything. It's crazy. But anyway. Missing because, half of, yeah. Because you had to fulfill the law. The blood has to be on the, the mercy the ark, seat. On the sea, on the sea. Yep. The mercy seat. Because mercy triumphs over judgment. Laura and I were talking about that yesterday. Now, here's yeah, that was huge. Elmer. You're going to like this. I, I preached this, uh, Trish, at Joe Adebay's church a few times that I preached. That when you look at the Ark of the Covenant from the Old Testament, right? And uh, watch, I mean, think through the miracle of the miracle of computers. Look at this. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. You can't see it, Zelma. But I, I can't see it. I just put up the Ark of the Covenant. Here's the mercy seat, guys. Can you see it, the Trish? Yes, it's gorgeous. Now, yep. in this box, which is made out of acacia wood, which represents us, we are the wood. It's overladen with gold. Okay. Uh -huh. That's God's covering on us. God covers us with Jesus Christ, his lordship. Gold is the metal of kingdoms of the king okay do you know that the eighth thing that god considered good in creation what it was never get eighth the eighth gold. thing gold. gold yeah the first mention of gold god said it was good see you see because money isn't the root of all evil the love of money is the root of all. so Inside this holy box, this cover comes off. And if any, if you remember the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah, it burns their face, and they got melted. You know, fifty thousand. Right. That happened in the Bible too. You know, you know that. Yes, it did. Yeah, fifty thousand. Uh, Lauren and Trish, fifty thousand were destroyed. I did because, not know that. Yeah, you can't look at. And what's the principle, though? You can't look upon his face. You can't. We can't. No, his face isn't there. What's in the box? The law kills. Oh. 
You can't look at the law without the blood covering it. Wow. Because mm -hmm. we've all broken it. We're human. And, and what's beautiful is that it's called the mercy seat, the throne of God. It's called the mercy seat. So mercy covers the law. Mercy with blood is above the law and covers the law. Through his blood only. And the two staves, you see here, these are wooden. That's the way you carry it. You cannot carry it. If you remember the story with David, got the notion, the inspiration, he was all excited. He put it on the, right, he put it on the ox cart. And they had it, you know, and what happened? The ox cart started to stumble. The man Uzzah went to steady it and was vaporized. And that caused David, how many, how do you know what happened? You know, guys know what happened to David after that? He did a John Scalzo. He got depressed. He did a, <laughs> oh, you got to read the story. He went to his, he, 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 he was very depressed and upset and, and wandering around his castle. Wow. He tried to move the ark and he failed. And, and and he couldn't understand. He says, I'm doing a good thing for God. I don't get this. God, what, what's wrong with you? I'm bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. That's where it belongs. This, and, and then, so he didn't get an answer from God probably until he woke up and realized, well, maybe I should check the scripture. <laughs> right, he got ahead of him. But you didn't check the scripture, did you? Okay. But he checked the scripture. He found out you don't move the Ark of the Covenant without the staves, the poles, and it has to be moved by priests and it has to be accompanied by sacrifice. So he got re right. got the Levitical priests, got the poles, and they went and and you got to read the story. I think it was five. They went five steps, stopped, yeah. killed the bull, went another uh, five, stopped, killed another bull. And, and David was so thrilled now that he could bring this presence of God back to his holy city that he danced with the priest's garment on. That's why his wife... His Mika, wife told him, called him an asshole. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah. She said that you... you, that you what you are you doing? Yeah. A commoner. See, because she was a haughty tawdy She was Saul's daughter. She was used to being the king's daughter. And uh, Right. She was in Nancy Pelosi. Oh, I didn't say that. Strike that. Oh, uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Oh, shit. Was, yeah, you did. As a matter of fact, when she despised, I, I happened to, I was reading a manuscript the other day I found. And I found this ancient manuscript in Hebrew. And if you read it carefully, it says that Mikhail was, was eating expensive ice cream while she was despising David. Oh! <gasps> What? No, no, Stop it. Asshole. All right. But I got you no. guys good. I had you go. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's fine. Uh -huh. we, we needed a laugh. Okay. We, we got a laugh. So anyway, it's such got a cool laugh. Story. Chocolate. Hopefully it was chocolate. But think about it. Okay. <laughs> Trish. How do we cover, how do we carry the Ark of the Covenant? Two wooden poles. So what comes to your mind? Thank you. That's the well, cross. Cross. Yeah. We all the figured that out. Right away. The Ark of the Covenant has inside of it three objects. Okay, here's the quiz. I told Lauren the other day, so, but she probably doesn't remember. I what? don't, because you know I'm brain dead. This is, this is, uh, this is for final jeopardy. <laughs> Thank you. Jar of manna. Mana, which is a mem. Okay. Right. And a nun. And it literally means, what is it? That's what it means in Hebrew. Mana. Because when God brought it, they went, ma, na, what is it? And they said, we'll pull up mana. Pull it up. But, um. Yes. So you had the tablets of Moses that God re-inscribed, but see, 
the first time that you know, how many of you know that the first time that Moses received the, the tablets, God carved them out. Yeah. The second, remember when Moses threw them <laughs> because he got a he broke them because they were they were having sex and and worshiping the, the calf, you know, which is basically Baal worship, and. Uh, when he went back, God made him carve out the tablets, but God inscribed it. And uh, let me read for you a thrilling thing. I shared it at Zelma's, but uh, that we're coming up on the time that Yom Terah, you know, we're coming at the time of, I want you guys to understand Pentecost is coming. And I believe it's very meaningful this year. I believe it's going to be very close to the beginning of June. It's like uh, March 28th. Now, in the occasion, I'm going to read this. Now, this is uh, a little teaching I did on the shofar. Now, the shofar is spelled shin, hey, vav, and resh. Now, what I know it doesn't mean much to you guys, but what if I look at the letters, I come up with this sentence. Fire from the mouth of the nailed prince. The shofar is that ram's horn that is blasted, that gathers the assembly and announces the presence or announces that God is about to do something, right? Uh, we, we call it the trump of God, but it's a shofar. Uh, okay. Now, let me read it. So now when Pentecost come, they would, they, this is now the, day, the original day of Pentecost. On the occasion, the rabbi writes this, on the occasion of the giving of the Torah, the children of Israel not only heard the Lord's voice, but actually saw the sound wave as they emerged from the Lord's mouth. They visualized them as a fiery substance. Each commandment that left the Lord's mouth traveled around the entire camp and then to each Jew individually. Asking him this question, do you accept upon yourself this commandment with all the Jewish law pertaining to it? Every Jew answered yes, after each commandment. Finally, the fiery substance, which they saw, engraved itself on the tablets. Now, when did you see that happen? The movie, The Ten Commandments. Remember you saw that swirling fire and God wrote on it? I never knew that the rabbis actually believed them. And I, you know, and that's what I have this thing here. If you can see the shofar. You guys, yeah. you see there, you see fire, a mouth, a nail, and then the head of Jesus. So, uh, yes. And that's why I love the Hebrew. You can get these pictures. But anyway, uh, so I want us to pay attention that uh, let's be looking the day of Pentecost, it's called Shavuot, Shavuot in Hebrew, which just means sevens. It means multiple sevens. The OT at the end of a word is usually means a plural feminine. Shavuot. Shev, Shev, the word Shev is seven. So after Jesus rose from the dead, they counted, okay? You count seven sevens which makes 49 days, right? And then you add one. So it's called Pentecost because Pent means five. Oh, yeah, 50, so yeah. 50, right. So we have that coming. So remember, we've been quarantined. Now we have the Pentecost. And I'd like to pray and believe that God is going to bring that fire and that wind and get rid of this nasty disease that we have inflicting us here. Maybe go back to here. Uh, I wanted to share with you because I know you're going to love this. Uh, yesterday, when I was praying in the morning, I was reading in Romans 16, which I never do. It's at the end, and there's a lot of Paul thanking people, a lot of it. And uh, I started reading it from 15 to 16, and the first verse says, "Now I introduce you." Uh, our sister Phoebe, who is a deaconess. But I 
So I, you know, be you know, I caught my ear. I wonder what the original wording is for deep. Let's see how that really relates. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so right. I looked it up, and the word for deacon or deaconess in Greek is diakonos. Diakonos, very similar to the way we say it, diakonos. But what's beautiful is I looked up the roots. That's what I'm saying. You can do that on a computer. You don't have to be a Greek scholar. But what came out blew me away. Zelma, diakonos, diakonos, literally means that you're thoroughly dust. I know you love it. <laughs> I knew Zelma was going to give me a... I knew I was going to get the ah. Uh, I love people that get the ah. Uh. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's when we, then I, I linked that to when Job said, you know what? I heard of you, but now I see you. And you know what? I, I throw I'm dust. dust. I'm just dust, man. I'm that's when you dust. get it. <laughs> You're butt dust. I and mean, you can interpret that any way you like. But. Yes. When somebody dies, they'll take the dust of the body and they'll throw it on themselves. Right. Part of the grieving. Right. Like my daughter's husband is Jewish background. Right. He's Christian now, but having to go to funerals, Jewish funerals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when his mom died and stuff like that. Well, well, the object, the object of tonight, I, and we have a nice little group here to pray. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that God has shown me. Uh, we're not going to get into Psalm 94, but I will tell you guys to read Psalm 94 in your today, tomorrow, in your meditation. Oh. It's a very powerful prayer to pray. You should be praying Psalm 94, especially in regards to the government, especially in regards okay. to, to the things that are happening. Psalm 94 is really pertinent things that God is doing because right now he's judging the government. Right. He's judging his church. He's angry about abortion. He's angry about a lot of the stuff that's going on in America. We just read Billy Graham's prayer. We won't read it again. I'll, I'm going to text it to you. Uh, I don't know if you remember. Send it to it. Zelma. Zelma will I'll like that. Send Zelma. it to her. But, but, I mean, you know, that's when he and Billy Graham died. Yeah. And they had the funeral. President Trump insisted that he be put in the um, cathedral in, in in Washington, D.C. That's right, that's right. And uh, he would be honored. Because Amen. it's like, it's a matter of, you know, it's like, yeah. Billy Graham doesn't need it. God got it. So God, yeah, yeah. God used him so powerful. Well, that just shows you, you know, that, you know, look, Trump is God's man. He came in. They didn't see it. They didn't see it coming. God no. snuck him in. He doesn't belong to the elite. He doesn't belong to the New World Order. That's why he's having so much trouble. But we're not going to get into that tonight. But if you wish to, if you want to follow in the scriptures, Zelma, because they can watch my screen. You can't. If you do and want to get your Bible, you can do so. If you just want to listen, listen. I'm just saying to you, if you want to get your Bible, you turn to Daniel 9. I'm going to be going through that a little bit. Okay. Uh, Bible here. If you want, go to Daniel 9 if you want. I just want to point out some things. I'll start reading from Daniel 9.1. The first year of the reign of Darius the Mede, the son of Ahasuerus, who was king of the Babylonians. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah. Now, Daniel had a scroll with Jeremiah on. Jeremiah's prophecy was written down. Daniel had it. Okay. Now you got to remember. Remember I told you about before and after? You got to remember that God sent Jeremiah and I recommended to Lauren. Uh, yes, yeah, you did. That TV movie series called Jeremiah. It's one of the yeah. finest ever done in my estimation of a Bible story. It has that guy McDermott in it, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, no, the Jewish yeah. guy. Not McDermott. Right. No, it's, they called him Dr. McDreamy. He was on Grey's Anatomy. He was Jew he's Jewish. Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, I don't know Jewish. his name. Look it up. If you can find it, you will love it. It is very accurate depiction of Jeremiah, how God called him 
as before the captivity. So this is before the Babylonian captivity. God called Jeremiah, I think right he now. He sent him out to warn. He sent him out there with a mission and he, fortified so he him. Jeremiah today. Yeah. And, and Jeremiah's message, that God gave Jeremiah's message that Babylon is coming and you can't stop it. Now, they didn't want to believe it, the Jews, the movie depicted. They didn't want to believe it so badly that they persecuted, tortured Jeremiah. Yeah. But they had another, uh, I think the other prophet who was a lying prophet, whose name was Hazanai or something like that. He was saying that everything would be all right, we we're going to win, and all this other stuff. Meanwhile, uh, Jeremiah prophesied his death, and the guy did die. Um, what happened? Wait, is, so that guy, his name started with an H. Who the heck was that? Because I was just started. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sorry. Not Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great king. Of, he was the second best king in Israel. Hezekiah, that's a whole other story. You have to read four different books in the Bible to put his life together. I know that. I can't were. even. I can't even hold all this information. How do you do that, John? But okay, go ahead. It's right. It's what I, so I so anyway so Dan so Jeremiah prophesied he told them to be seventy years he told them surrender and you'll be marched north you'll live if you don't pick up the sword and fight you'll live that was the word no but the did. persecution was coming from the north to them he told Jeremiah to Babylon, tell them right Babylon would have been Iraq okay. Now, Babylon was the greatest kingdom in the world at that time. Jews, but you see, the Jews had a very American way. Yeah, they, that they, you know, we're the best. We, you know, you can touch us, blah, 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 you know, and, and they were proud of themselves and were proud. But what happened is also the priesthood, the leadership, became corrupt. It was very yeah. corrupt, as is in America now. So we're in yeah. this same place. Yeah. Man is flawed, power corrupts. I pray that God doesn't use China, but he could to, to destroy the United States and we become prisoners. I don't want to see that happen. I'd rather go to New Zealand and escape that. But <laughs> you so, John? John, who did you say that he could? I'll take the cold. As long as there's no, uh, there's no terrorists and there's no COVID-19, I'll be okay. Uh, so anyway, so when he learned from the scriptures, so Daniel, verse 3 says, I turned to the Lord, pleaded with him in prayer. I also wore rough burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes. So uh -huh. that's what see now. More dust, more so dust. Now we go back, we go here all the way down, back to Daniel. Okay, so now. Four, I pray to the Lord my God and confess. Now, remember this, that as men go in the Bible, probably next to John the Baptist, you're going to have Daniel. Daniel is a eunuch, is a godly prayer, a faster. There's not one bad thing said about Daniel in the scripture. That's yeah. The so he represents the righteous Christian. But look what he says. Oh, Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commandments. But, but we have sinned. We. You get the we? Yeah. He didn't say you. He's not talking to Israel. He's talking to God. We have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. Six, we have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to our kings and princes, ancestors, and to all the people of the land. So then he goes in verse seven, Lord, you're in the right. But you see, our faces are covered with shame. This is true of all of us, including the people of Judah, Jerusalem, and all Israel, scattered near and far. Wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you. 
and he goes down to nine. But the Lord our God is merciful, forgiving, and even though we have rebelled against him, and we have not obeyed the Lord our God, for we have not followed instructions. He refused to listen to his voice. Now, so he goes on to say, so now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured down on us because of our sin. You have kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you want. Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. Every curse written against us in the Lord Jesus has come true. Yet we have refused to seek mercy from the Lord our God by turning from our sin, recognizing his truth. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all these things. So, we, you know, I want to just read a couple of things. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Let me see. I got some highlights. I've been in the red. Now, 20 says this. Now, you got to remember, he's praying, right? Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> now, that's the same angel that comes to Mary. Right. I went on praying and confessed my sin and the sin of my people. Pleading with the Lord my God for Jerusalem, his holy mountain. As I was praying, Gabriel, whom I had seen in an earlier vision, came swiftly to me at the time of the evening sacrifice. He explained to me, Daniel, I have come here to give you insight and understanding. Verse 23, the moment you began praying, a command was given. Wow. And now I am here to tell you what it was. Now watch this. For you are very precious to God. How awesome is that? Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. This is the way you're supposed to respond to this stuff, man. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. People don't respond to this. Yeah. It's hard because, you know, when we get it, yeah. And we comprehend it, we take hold of it, and then we make it become part of who we are, you know. And we're still human, we still have stuff we're dealing with, all that. Oh, I got plenty of that. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but when it hits you like this, when it just... Hits, yeah. In that uh, yeah. when he when I, that hit me the other day, God brought me to this, and I haven't heard of the prophets or anybody, not that it, for anything. No, I haven't heard anybody preaching from Daniel nine and ten, but it, it's very pertinent to what where is happening now. Okay, now we go to ten, we skip over a little bit, and it says, hey, I, Daniel saw this vision. The the men with me saw nothing. But they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. So they're all alone to see this amazing vision. Now listen to what he says. My strength left me. My face grew deathly pale and I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak. Now he's talking about the angel. Those are the man. But angels don't have wings. They look like men. And when I heard the man I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground. What I want to point out is that's what happened to John in the book of Revelation. He fell down as a dead man. Now look, the same thing happened to Daniel, happened to John. In verse 10, just then a hand touched me and lifted me up. I'm still trembling in my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up. For I have been said to you. He said this to me. I stood up still trembling. He said, don't be afraid, Daniel. That's the first day you began to pray for understanding. 
and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. And that's what I wanted to share. You know, what comes next, uh, this description, sounds, okay, you doing something, somebody doing something mechanical? Lauren, something going on? Uh-oh, not me. Okay, I don't know, I guess it's something weird. Um, what I wanted to show you guys, um, because I thought it was just uh, crazy. Uh, I'm just going to read a little bit from Revelation, from the Williams, uh, Revelation chapter 1. I turned to see who it was who was speaking to me, and as I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Among the lampstand, one resembling the Son of Man wearing a robe that reached to his feet with a belt of gold around his breast. His head and hair were as white as white wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like coals of fire. His feet were like bronze, fine to white heat in the furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he was holding seven stars and a sharp double-edged sword was coming out of his mouth. And his face was shining like the sun at midday. First thing I'm gonna remind you is, on the Mount of Transfiguration, it said Jesus was shining like the sun at midday. Verse 17, 117. So when I saw him, I felt at his feet like a dead man. That is called being surrendered. That is not surrendering. That is the experience of surrender, which happens when you get a revelation of Jesus Christ. That and that alone allows you to surrender. And here's what is so parallel, struck me, which I never saw before the other day in Daniel. But he laid his right hand upon me and said, do not be afraid anymore. In the Greek, it's a double negative, which means do not, do not ever, 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 never, ever, never, ever, ever be afraid. That's I just really, 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 really like that because I've been accused of being crazy so much because people told me I was supposed to be afraid. Yeah. And I said, I can't be afraid. There you go. Then you, you, you got the revelation, you know, and I, I, I pray tonight we all get it. I don't have it fully, but Zelma's got it a little better than us. He said, I am the first and the last. Yea, yeah. the ever living one. I once was dead. But now I live forever and ever. Now, Jesus, I don't know how these people that don't know that Jesus is God. Jesus clearly says, I'm the first and the last. You look in Isaiah 42, 44. He says, God says, not Jesus. God says, I'm the first and the last. There's no other. I'm the first and the last. There's no other. I'm the first and the last. No the first and the last. So yeah. it can't be two first. <laughs> two last. I was dead, now I live forever and ever. I carry the keys of death and the underworld. So I just want to show you the parallel from the old into the new. And one of the things is we're going to get to prayer and communion. It's getting late, it's 930. When we, get, he says, I came, I come, you know, the angel says, I come in answer to your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. There is yeah. battle in the heavenlies. That's right. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I'm here to explain. So he gave Gabriel enough rest that he could come to Daniel. Yeah. Now I'm here to to explain what will happen to our people in the future. You know, this, and this is the area where Daniel, you know, prophesies the end times, he prophesies Jesus' crucifixion accurately to the day, and all this other stuff. We won't get into that. I just wanted to finish with 15, 
And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face on the ground and I became dumb, silent. You see, when God speaks, then we drop to the ground and we're quiet. Then the one who looked like a man touched my lips and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing in front of me, I'm filled with anguish because of the vision I have seen. And I'm very weak. For how can a servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me. Neither is there breath left in me. Now I got to remind you that Jesus said, blessed are those who are out of breath. When you're poor in spirit, that means you're out of breath. So when you're out of breath, guess what? You breathe in Yah. Yeah. That's how I pray in the morning. Guys gotta try it. Like take you can go, you breathe in Yah, you go Yah, breathe it in. And then you can say Yah. Ho, you know, Yahovah. You can say Yah, Yahovah Sidkenu. You can say all these names of God. And what you do is you breathe in Yahovah Adonai, Yahovah. You, you, you breathe in Yah. Now, when you breathe in Yah, you're breathing in God. See? And that's why I came up with this whole idea that we can become divine ventilators. We, we're divine ventilators. That You're talking about ventilating people who have problems breathing, but we should be divine ventilators because God, if we're the avatars of God, right? If we pull in the spirit of God, we breathe it in. Then when we speak his name in the various forms, wherever God moves, then we're influencing the environment with the name of God, the names of God, the power of God. So like I'll sit there for 20 minutes and I'll just intone like, you know, Yahshua. I'll put, because yeah, I breathe in Yah. Yeah. You know, like Yah. Over Nisi, yeah. you know, over Sitkinu, yeah. over Sabiat, all the different names of God, whatever moves me. And I feel like that God, is, if, if I'm his avatar, then his word and vibrations are going out on the earth. And why shouldn't we be used just like Daniel, just like anybody else? He told us he wanted to do it. Right. So then he, then the one who looked like a man touched me again and I felt my strength returning and he says again now 19 the angel says don't be afraid now listen he said well you are very precious to God and the angel says peace be encouraged be strong I'm gonna end with that isn't that beautiful I never knew this I can't get any more encouraging than that. I love the Old Testament too, but Daniel especially. Don't be afraid. You are very precious to God. Peace. Be encouraged. Be strong. Are you kidding me? Amen, amen. Look at that. It's up on the screen. I mean, recording this. We yeah. YouTube. Yeah, I hope so. Really, it's got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's got put on there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like um. How do you how do you? I don't know. I don't even have the words. That's it. You see, when when it gets you, you don't even have words. We don't have words. No. We don't have words. We don't, we don't have to. It's it's how we feel. Home. Right. And it's all about reality and experience. So I want you guys grab your bread and your wine or your juice or whatever you're doing. Got it. I don't care what, what's between you and God, but you, uh, whatever, whatever reminds you of Jesus is fine. As long as it's not a TV, you're okay. No, it's just, it's just as long as you don't eat a, as long as you don't eat a slab of bacon, then, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My reunite, reunite. Yes. But I'm at my sister's. They, 
they don't have wine. So when I'm home, I have wine. And when I'm there, I have grape juice. Whatever it is, it is. There's no, there's no judgment here. You do this and remember <laughs> what the Lord said, right? Amen. Amen. Well, Father, we take this bread, we take this representation of your body. This is a picture. This is a symbol. It's a sign. But you said to do it. And so it's hearing and obeying that brings the blessing of God. Not hearing. Hearing and obeying. Jesus said, who are my brothers and my sisters? They who hear and obey my father. His desires become our purpose. Right now, he said, I desire to eat this with you. I desire to share my body with you. I desire that you become my avatars on earth, that I can inhabit your body, that the signs and wonders and miracles did. We need to start not because we have our own righteousness, but because we have his righteousness. His righteousness was bought for us by this broken body. That's what he wants. It's not about our holiness. It's righteousness that he gives us. And right now, we thank you, Lord, for giving us your righteousness. We take it. You know, um, doing this, it's like verification. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I had a lot of life going on. I remember dealing with lawyers and different stuff. And yeah. I said, well, they need a paper like this. I said, you need to seal on it. Yeah. And, okay, put a seal on it. All right. That verifies it. This is the seal. Amen. Yeah. Well, the seal, we're going to take the cup of the sealing of the covenant, as as Zelma just rightly said. He said, this is sealed in my blood. Uh It's his blood that paid the price, that seals the covenant. This is our Shabbat. Shabbat means to return to the cross. It means return to the covenant. Return to what God and Jesus did for us together on our behalf. We drink this knowing that we, as the angel said to Daniel, don't be afraid. You are very precious to God. Shalom, be encouraged, and be strong. In Jesus' name, we raise the the cup. Amen, shalom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If anybody would like, I'm not going to, uh, I, I would like, if anybody needs prayer, let's let's pray now. Zelma will pray. Somebody will pray. If not, let me know. And we'll just say goodnight. But if somebody has a need prayed about, we want to give you the opportunity. John, I just want to thank you that you taught us uh, the last time we were together that shalom is is peace, but it's not just peace. It's the idea, it's the principle that everything, all is well, everywhere. All is well. It's a bigger, yeah, it's a bigger word. This, it it's a really every, big word. Very big. Shalom, it yeah. means... Everything is paid for. It really relates to the Jubilee. Everything goes back to God. You know, it relates to settling all accounts. That's the word I did miss. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yes. The word shalom actually means more that all accounts are settled. I love that. Yeah. That's what it means. It's all done. It's all done. It's settled. The debt has been paid. 
And and that's you know that's that that's so of course you can have peace when you have your debts paid, when you have yeah. the accounts. And that's why Paul, you know, it just goes on and on and on. They have to eventually shut me up, but <laughs> Paul says, therefore we're ambassadors of Christ. He said, he said we have a message of reconciliation to people. Yeah. The account has been paid. That's our gospel. That's it, exactly. And when I'm the salvation, yeah. We lead with sin or oh maybe you do this or that. That's not the gospel. The gospel is it's been paid by God. He's not your enemy. He's saying Paul said you're ambassadors of Christ, telling them that you are not no longer the enemy of God. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You are you are precious. It's everything that you just yeah. said. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Zelma. Zelma's got something. I, I was just saying that for me, people say, well, how can you do this? And I tell them, because I can do this because God loves me. They say, well, what, what are you just because he's loving you say God loves me? I said, he has yeah. crazy love. Yeah, yeah. Crazy love. It's yeah. so far over the top. You can't explain it. You can't understand it because there's always more. Amen. And and it's like, you know, like, I got that early when I was a kid, I think. But anyhow, it's like, it's just knowing this is what God's love. We want to compare it to our TV shows or, I don't know, some sitcom or some romance yeah. book. But it's not that at all. It's so much more. Amen. There's no end to this. There's no end. This is eternity. We all have already stepped into eternity. We're living here, we're walking through our times here, but we're already in eternity. You became an eternal being when you really took hold of the God who said he loved us that much. Amen. And Woo! I, I have to read this because it just popped in my face. I turned to 2 Corinthians 5. I love it in the Williams. For I know that if this earthly tent in which I live is taken down. I have a building in heaven which comes from God. A house not built by human hands, but eternal. For in this mm. one I am sighing, because I long to put on like a robe my heavenly body, my future home. And if I do put it on, I shall not find myself to be disembodied. For I, who am still in my tent, am sighing beneath my burdens, because I do not want it to be put off, but to put on the other over it, so that my dying body may be absorbed in life. Now it wow. is himself who has put the finishing touches on me for this change. Because he has given me the spirit as the first payment or installment of future bliss. How is that? Amen. Come on mm -hmm. now. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. I mean, this is, like, this is, people say, well, why do you do this? Or, you know, I'm going here, I'm going to, I took off and went down to Charlotte. One, what do you got? I'm going down there. Well, why? Because I think God wants me to go. I, I, I been calling me. I gotta go. Or I'm gonna do this. Or I'm gonna do that. And it's not. It's like we live in a world that you reason. And I'm not saying God's unreasonable, but he's beyond reasonable. Oh no, yeah, yeah. His ways are. Look, I love the Psalm says this, and you know we'll end with this and. The Psalms say this, God's way, God's footprints are in the water. Can't see them. So oh, about it. okay. Yeah. Can't understand, just you know they're there, but you cannot see it. Footprints are in the right. water. Uh, yeah, does right. anybody have a quick prayer need? I know, Trish, we're always praying for Don, but anything else? I'm good. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, um, I, I'm trying to stay real positive, you know, 
because we um you know i you know what's going on john so i don't know if you want to share yeah, stop, stop, stop. All right. stop. I, I need Guy Don, who's got the cancer and all his problems, his son died. He didn't even know about it. It's oh very gosh. tragic. This is a real horror show. This is, you know, this is a, this is rough. What, what this yeah. family's going through. I don't know the ins and outs of it. I wish, you know, uh, I, what can I say? It's 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 no it's very very the time. It's the time. The timing, and he does know now. He knows about oh, it. He does. So he does. Yeah. He found out when they wheeled him back from the procedure, the text yeah. came in on my sister's phone and he read it that um, oh. Kevin didn't make it. And so, yeah, now he's dealing with that along with um, trying to heal from, you know, so, um, yeah. yeah um, oh. So, we just, you uh, know, Tina, I did really. Like I said, you know, we'll, we'll end with this. I mean, Tina's got her situation. We got friends, Frank and Mary. Their daughter's got the COVID with the boy, with the fiance. They're going right. To, uh, right now, uh, with God is, you know, we, we have to take this word and we have to live it in our environment. We can. That's can, can I just pray for a minute? Please Father, do. thank you. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord above every situation, everything that goes on, even all the confusion. Sometimes we feel that we live in, so it's so hard for us to understand or to fully comprehend what you're doing. But Lord, I ask that you give us the eyes of our heart, not our head, but of our heart, to discern and to see that we may know what your will is, that we may walk in agreement with it, that we wouldn't have to fight because I'm a fighter and I know what it feels like when things aren't going the way we think it should. But Lord, you know everything going on. You love every single person. We are your creation. We are your children. You adore us. You have plans for us for good and not for evil. You have plans and a hope and a future. So whatever we walk through, it's, a, it's, a, it's like, okay, we're walking through, we don't like it, feels like crap and stuff like that. But in the meantime, you're still God, you're still God, and we can still come to you. We can still cry out yes. and know that we know that, and know that you hear us. And so then we can enter that peace. So I ask for everybody concerned tonight with every person, every situation, that you would pour your peace into our hearts, that we may fully and completely know you. And that this night, even while we fall asleep or struggle or question, that we would be able to enter rest because you ordained that for us. You were literally ordained it, that you would give us rest. So, mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for the rest that you're bringing forth for each and every one, the ones we know and don't know. You know what's going on. And I'm glad that you're a God. We're just people, God, but, you know, we're made in your image. So I thank you, Lord, that our prayers have effect to reach those people, to move in their lives, move in their situation, to bring restoration, restore hope, restore faith, and guide them in their journey. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory. Amen. And on that note, I want to say yeah. a good night. And we will... Oh, man. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Love, love everybody. Love you all. Here. Thank you, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye.